Well, you know, having this meeting and, and wanting to have this discussion, I think the first thing was is that we are all making history. We are all making history in America, um, black history um, within our communities, but history within this state. And it is an opportunity to really sit here and talk. I know that we all have amazing stories because we know how to persevere. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just wanted to have an opportunity to talk about what, how we feel about being here, um, what we hope to do, um, what we have done. So who would like to start? Well, it seems like I'm the senior member here, and, I, and I'll tell you what it means to me. Uh, and I, I get a, a great sense of pride when I look around and I, I see this group. Uh, I first came to the legislature in 1999 and I was the only black member here. And there's no question about it, uh, it was a lonely world. Uh, there were times that I wanted to have conversations with people. Uh, it doesn't matter how kind they try to be, and people always want to make you feel good, but there is a difference when there isn't an Eric Pettigrew to go and talk to about a certain issue. Maybe it was an issue involving my kids that he would have understood. So for me, I, it's just a great deal of pride to have uh, all of you here because uh, you're such quality individuals and I'm just proud beyond words to have the privilege of working with all of you. So that's how I feel. Thank you, Jerry. I guess I'll go. Um, when we came for the orientation on the floor, when I sat in at my desk for the first time, I had tears in my eyes. Because there was a time that we weren't even allowed in that room, except for maybe to serve coffee. And so for me to have the audacity to be in that room on that floor was huge for me. And I understand that to the core of me, as I have to walk around in this skin color every day, and that I have to take the onslaught of, having, of walking in this color every day. So this is, this is huge that we can all five be here together and that we can all impact this legislation from a lens of equity and diversity and inclusion. And that's mainly what I'm really here for, is to ensure that there's meaningful law and policies that come through that lens. I am just happy that there's more than just one of us, <laughs> or two of us, because, uh, I mean, the expectations for, you know, Anytime there's issues that come up with African Americans or people of color, they automatically look right to us. And I mean, even if it's MLK Day, I mean, you're, the work that you're doing on, on uh, Black History Month, I mean, that's great because MLK Day comes up. You're, I mean, you just feel like, okay, I should probably stand up and say something. Um, but uh, I think back when uh, I got, had a chance to know Sam Smith and um, George Fleming. And they used to tell me stories uh, about serving in the legislature and they'd get in the elevator and people would get out. Mm -hmm. oh, and, um, or that he would be trying to get information and they wouldn't give him the information like staff and all that because he was, he was black. And so when I hear those stories and I like you, you know, you walk in this room, you, I, I can't tell you how many tears you shed because you put yourself out there on the floor and the responsibility in addition to the constituents you serve, just the history that you bring into this building and that you're one of maybe 20, less than 20 people who've ever, African-Americans who have ever, in the years that the state of Washington has been in existence, has been able to walk through those doors and sit on that floor is an incredible honor and an incredible, there's some pressure there, but also there's a sense of real responsibility to actually do things and make sure you leave a legacy, not necessarily for your name, mm -hmm. but for all the people that have uh, believed in you and come before you and the kids and the young people that are coming after you. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the most daunting thing that I take with me every single day I walk in this building. No, I, I would echo that, Representative Pettigrew. I think as we reflect on Black History Month and, and what it means for each of us uh, individually, but what it means for this institution collectively, I think about leaders like Rosa Franklin and Don Mason and 
the black women who've come before. And, and I had the honor of being the first black woman elected back to the house in 18 years mm -hmm. when I came two years ago. And I think like you and, and others, it's, you know, you never want to be pigeonholed as just the black legislator, mm -hmm. but at the same time, acknowledging and respecting the fact that representative government matters and that the folks who come here and see themselves reflected in each of us as leaders, um, that that's, that's a, a privilege and an honor that I think we each get to carry. And, and initially I was shy about that, right? Because I didn't want to be the black woman. I didn't want to be the black legislator. But I think you find that, um, particularly when there's so few of us, right? And, and thank you to Representative Lubbock and Representative Pettigrew for being the mentors I needed over the last two years. And I hope that we now, you know, forming the first Black Members Caucus in the history of the legislature can be not only mentors to our new members, but to, to your point, all of the people who are going to come after us, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're not going back, right? This is a, an opportunity to move forward and to make sure that our government continues to be reflective and representative of the communities that we serve. Um, and so as I reflect on Black History Month, I think about all of the people who've come before us um, and hopefully all of the people who will come after us as we work to make this place the most inclusive and representative form of government possible. If I could just um, comment on what Representative Lovick was mentioning, that you were the only black person here at one time. And I think that having uh, more of us here now starts opening a door, starts giving everyone the space to now come forth as these black person now. We don't have to hide our color. We don't have to assimilate per se into a white world, but that we bring our black selves to work and that we bring our black issues. I don't think that we should have to put our issues or our skin color on the back burner just because we come to work. I think that's the beauty of the state of Washington and electing all five of us here is that we're saying, and even with our member of color caucus, that there's 12 of us there. The state of Washington, I think, is at the forefront of saying that we want to be the house of the people, That's right. not the house of the establishment and not the house of the legislature, but the house of the people. And this group right here starts saying that emphatically that we're moving forth now, that there's power in numbers and that we now have the space to be who we really are. You know, I'm glad you said that because if you remember when I was sworn in as Speaker Pro Tem, I talked about this place being the people's house. Mm -hmm. And over my left shoulder, is a picture of my grandmother. Mm. And I will tell you this, the proudest moment in my life was when I was sworn in and she walked up the 45 steps mm. from the parking lot into this building and walked in the front door. Mm. And that was an extremely proud moment for me because growing up in Louisiana, she couldn't walk in the front door of homes that she cleaned. Right. She would right. clean homes and would have to walk in the back door, walk around the front door, walk around to the front to scrub the porch and walk back in the back door. But yet she walked in the front door of the people's house, the same people's house that the five of us get to serve in mm, yeah. with honor, with dignity, and with pride. Yes. And so what I see is that we're just creating something that kids are gonna see us. And I, I just love it when kids just look up with, uh, with their mouths open because they see the five of us. Mm -hmm. Because we were told this, and sometimes uh, it, it sounds like a cliche, but they would say, you, you, you can't be what you can't see. They can see us now, and they know they can be what we are. Just like we were able to see President Obama for eight years. So I, I will tell all of you, uh, my sense of pride is, I have so much pride in having the honor of serving with all of you. And we're gonna do great stuff. Thank you, John. I wanted to say that um, for me, the greatest honor is when we are walking um, in the ledge building and we see groups of school kids and we st I, t I always stop and I say hi that. because school kids are just my heart yeah. and so I will talk to them and people will often ask well what do you do here and mm -hmm. I said well I'm a member of the legislature and I get to work with my colleagues to make good law and they go you're a member of the legislature mm -hmm. you're a member of the legislature really really where do you live where are you from <laughs> 
Um, I think one of the most wonderful things is the fact that I'm not from Seattle. No offense to Seattle. <laughs> that, I'm from, <laughs> that I'm from a suburb and that we are looking at diversity not only in the wonderful city of Seattle, but in the wonderful cities of Kent, Auburn, and Covington as well. We are everywhere and we belong here. Mm. And so it is a wonderful experience to talk to the school kids about being a legislator. Well, I'll, I'll bring up another issue is that um, we will be celebrating Black History Month um, on the 18th of February. And I will say that I'm a, I'm a bit disheartened that um, this has not been celebrated before and that uh, it took a little bit to get a resolution to come forth. But I am excited that we will be recognizing the month for us. Already, it is the shortest month and the coldest month. <laughs> <laughs> that we get to um, celebrate our blackness. But the reality is, is that our children need to know, but not only our children, but everybody in the state, in the country, needs to know that we are important and we deserve to be recognized. Because my question as I walk around campus is how many black people helped build this place? So can we be recognized for that? The other thing that I think is, is we'll start uh, paving a road for is that how do people interact with us? They have their own ideas of what equity means. They have our own ideas on how they should relate to us. There have been some interesting conversations that I have had, and I encourage all of you to make sure you put the correct information forward. Even as simple as someone asking me who my boss is. <laughs> I am the boss because I'm bossed up. But. <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> but the reality is I don't think that the shift is being made that they're used to we're always in the help capacity but now we're in the leadership capacity and that's a shift in thinking a shift in conditioning and I'm glad to be a part of that. Can I just underscore something that uh, uh, she said I, I'm kind of getting away from that word diversity myself. I'm considering it leadership. I think that it's about leadership. And you hit the nail right on the head. It's about leadership. And we're showing leadership. I mean, because of where we are, and, and I probably get to see uh, what you guys don't see. I get to stand there with the roster, and I get to listen to some of the most powerful speeches. I mean, this lady gives the most powerful speech you will ever hear. <laughs> there are times when she stands up, I'm just, I just can't wait. And I look at my watch and I, I say to myself, and you and I have talked about it, I hope she never stops talking. <laughs> and I know we're going to get the same thing out of the two of you. But it's about the leadership that we're going to bring. Because what I think people are going to see, and it's like you said, we're leaders. Mm -hmm. People knew who they were voting for when they elected us. They elected us to come to Olympia and provide leadership. And so I'm, I'm just, uh, it's about leadership for me. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I agree. It's... It's really about action and taking advantage of this, how this place works to get done for the communities and the constituents that you are here, whether it is the constituents you geographically represent or the constituents from a perspective of being African American in history. That's the only way I feel like I build my, I pay back what was given to me by my ancestors, which is this somewhere down the line one of my ancestors sat and thought about me maybe not me in particular but just imagine god i hope someday one of my kids or grandkids or great grandkids will be in that position to do something and i hear their voices all the time and every single time i move forward that's the only uh, objective is to do something that res that they can respect that they can look down on or over at and say, that's what I was talking about. And I'm very proud of that. And I carry that with me every single day. Everything else, all the other stuff on the side, I, I, it's not as, it's noise to me because that's the, that's the only way I get to honor them is to move forward and leave something behind. Mm -hmm. We have to go. <laughs> yeah. can, I, can I make one more? One more. In regard, in terms of the Black Member Caucus, what I'm excited about with this caucus is that not only are we going to be the leaders for our districts, 
But the reality is we're going to affect the community that's right around us. Yeah. I have been doing some driving around this community right off the uh, campus here. And there's a lot of work, a lot of work to be done. And I think that the Black Members Caucus can affect a lot of that. So coming from the outside in, and then even taking it out to our districts, I think is going to be awesome. And I'm looking forward to it. That's great. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you thank for you. bringing this up, and thank you for the conversation. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. We need to have this conversation. Maybe once a month. Yeah, we need to talk. <laughs>